This is the tutorial you've all been waiting for. How to use the Folksy Florals templates in Procreate. It, there's going to be a lot of stuff in this tutorial. I'm just warning you now. It's not going to be a short one. I'm going to dive in and show you exactly how I use these templates. Um, show you how to use the symmetry feature, uh, how to use color palettes, how to create different layers to help you stack your florals and make them the best they can be. So let's dive in. So I have this template that I've downloaded uh, from either my iPad or my computer. If you need help with that, see my tutorial about how to do that. And I am ready to get drawing. There's two things you want to consider before you start drawing though. And that is the size of, well I guess it's just one thing you want to consider, the size of your artboard. So they come in at a certain size. Most of the rectangles, I think all of them are eight by 10. The squares range from eight by eight or 10 by 10. So if you're happy with that, you're just wanting to post something on Instagram, they're set up, ready to go. You can just start going straight on this template. But if you know that you want to print it, say at 11 by 14 or 40 by, 72, whatever size you're wanting to do, then we need to take one more step before we can get started. So you're gonna come up here to your layers panel. You're gonna tap on um, the layer with the, um, with the template and hit copy. Then we're gonna go back to your gallery, hit the plus button, decide what size you want. Let's say you want 11 by 14. Your new 11 by 14 comes up. You can do three finger swipe down and hit paste. That will paste it right into the middle for you. But it comes in small because that's how it was before. So as you can see, kind of small. If we want to make that bigger, we want the magnetic turned on. We go up to this little arrow tool, hit the arrow tool, make sure magnetic is on and size it as big as you want. But now the problem is, is that it's not perfectly centered in the middle of the page. You can tell that there's a little bit more space here than there is over here. And that's not gonna work once we turn the symmetry feature on because this one has that symmetry line right down the middle. Unfortunately, Procreate doesn't have a way yet to um, center things on the artboard, but I've come up with a little bit of a workaround for that. If you go to your little gear, and go to Canvas, turn on your drawing guide, which you need to turn on anyways to use the symmetry feature. Hit Edit Drawing Guide, go to Symmetry, and then you want this one that's turned into four quadrants there at the bottom. So we'll hit the four quadrant. This gives you a line in, in um, the middle going horizontal and vertical. Hit Done. Now go back up to that arrow, and we can use these little dots on the side to center our artboard, or center our art on the artboard. So those little dots are centered on that middle line. These little dots are centered on this line. That way you know that you can be safe with your symmetry, all will be well. But we have one more step to do because if you look at this, this is only flipped across this middle line. It's not flipped across this middle line. So we need to go back into the gear, hit edit drawing guide, and go to the vertical symmetry. That means it will flip it going this way. Some of the templates are in that quadrant, so you would just leave that on. But for this one, we just need the symmetry going across that vertical line, and hit done. To get started with drawing, I like to turn down the opacity on my template so that it's just a light little guide in the background. It's not so strong as it is now. So I go up to the layers. You can rename this. If you're using it in the original template download, it will say the template name, but since we brought this into a new file, we're gonna need to rename that so we know that that's our template. You can see this little assisted under template. That means that the symmetry is turned on for that layer. And so we're gonna to have to make sure that every layer that we draw on has that assisted turned on. So we're gonna first turn down the opacity though. So I hit this little N and I turn that opacity down. You may not be able to even see it anymore in the video, but it is there. You can turn it down to whatever level is comfortable for you. Tap the N again to make that go away. 
and then make a new layer. The reason we want a new layer instead of working directly on the template layer is if we start working directly on the template layer, then all those lines are still gonna be there in our final piece, which we don't want. We want to have a fresh, beautiful piece and then be able to turn the template off and be on our way. I like to pull that new layer below the template so the template's always sitting on top so I can see my guides because sometimes as you get coloring or drawing, you cover up the template if it's on the bottom and then you lose it and it's no longer visible and that can make it a little hard. So on this new layer, we can start drawing. So I'm going, oh, I missed something. We cannot start drawing yet because watch what happens if I just go ahead and start drawing. Let's say I have green. Oh, let's choose a better brush than that. Let's go to our Folksy Florals brushes. My favorite one to use is this textured filler and liner. And I'm gonna start drawing, oh wait, it's only showing up on one half and not the other. That means we don't have our symmetry turned on. So I'm gonna do, use two fingers to undo that. Go back up to my layers, tap on the layer name, and hit drawing assist. Now that assisted shows up underneath the layer name. And when I go to draw, it is there. That's what we want. So you can just keep drawing using these little straight lines coming from the stems are just a guide to show you where you could put leaves, but you could also add another little one down there. You can color it in, leave them as is. This is where the fun part comes in. I want you guys to be able to use these to just easily create in your style, no matter what that style is. Maybe you don't have a really folksy style and yours is more geometric. That can still be achieved with these templates. leaves done. I could just keep going straight on to do flowers, but I like to do things on separate layers. The reason for that is if I need to go back and edit something, it's going to be a lot easier if I have things separated onto separate layers than if I'm drawing everything on the same layer. Because if I you know, wanted to add some shadows to these leaves or some lines on top, and then I decide later, ugh, much later, after I've done a bunch of other things, that's not really what I wanted. I then have to go in and erase those things rather than just turn on or off a layer. So I'm gonna add a new layer above the leaves to start doing some flowers. Once again, you can see I made the mistake of not turning on that symmetry. So two fingers to undo, click this, and drawing assist. Now my symmetry is there and working properly. Okay, so on this flower, I have these little petals down here, but I want to draw some other petals that look like they're coming from behind these top red flowers. So what I'm gonna do is go back down to the leaf layer and add a new layer. So this layer will be beneath that red little petal shape. And if I go to my light pink, now as I create, oh, and I have to turn on that symmetry, drawing assist. Now as I create some petals to this flower, they're drawn underneath the red instead of being drawn right on top or having to get really close to that edge and try and be careful. I don't have to worry about being careful. I can just color it in and know that it's gonna go behind those red petals at the bottom. Now it doesn't matter which layer I keep drawing on for the rest of my flowers. Since they're all gonna be individual and not touching, I can layer up multiple, each flower doesn't necessarily need to have its own layer, but I usually try and do all of the bottom parts. So this pink being beneath the red on the same, and then the top pieces being on the same, that just makes my organization easier. So I'm gonna keep drawing on this pink layer. As you can see, my flower shapes also don't have to match the shape that's in the template. It is just a placeholder to give you a spot to put a flower. That does not mean that the flower needs to be square shaped because what flowers are square shaped? Not very many. create 
some texture, there's a few ways you can do it. You could draw directly onto a layer, but then as I said before, you it's gonna be harder to backspace out of that. You can draw it on a new layer. Make sure you turn on that symmetry. Uh, let's say I'm gonna go with a lighter pink to draw on the sides of these petals. Um, I'm gonna use the dot texture for this for my folksy floral brushes. Oh, and it is really, really light. We're gonna turn it up a bit so it's a bit bigger. So you can see that is coming in right there, but if I turn off the template, it's going pretty far over the edge. Sometimes that might be the look that you want, and it's great, and you like the kind of off of the edges textured look, and that's exactly what you're going for. If so, keep going. But if you want it to be cut in where that back drawing is, there is a way to do that. So we've drawn all of these shapes, they're going over the edge. If we go to that layer, which looks like this weird little hand thing going on, tap that and hit clipping mask, it's going to clip to whatever is behind it. So that means, or beneath it, that means that below layer is cutting off the texture layered above it. So it's all along the edges now. Now on that clipping mask layer, I can continue to draw other, let's make that a little bigger, other little details and things, and I don't have to worry about going over the edge and having it come outside of where I want to draw. So I can do the same thing. You have to watch to make sure what layer you're clipping to. So it will clip to these yellow flowers. So I'm gonna go to this and I can put some little details along the edges of these flowers and I can go through and do that for my whole piece. Now let's say I want to add some texture to this red or to the leaves. They're not on that same layer, so I'm gonna to have to create a new clipping mask layer for those. So I'm gonna to go to the green leaves, add a layer above, tap it and hit clipping mask. That clipping mask also needs to get the drawing assist for the symmetry. Now I can go with a green and draw along the sides of the leaves. Same goes for this red leaf part and these white insides. If I want to clip something to those, make a new layer, clipping mask, drawing assist. And I can come in on here. Oh, drawing assist didn't actually click. And now I can draw onto that layer. And I can do some little detail things inside of these white areas. All right, that is a pretty lovely piece. So if you ever, um, are wondering if you missed anything on the template or you just want to see how you ended up filling up the template, you can turn that template back on. So this has that oval shape around it. You could use that if you want and do a border or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Or let's say you're like, well, I thought I wanted this in an oval, but now I kind of just want to fill up the rest of the page. Now that you kind of have an idea of how things could go, you can go back to one of these layers and start adding your own little flower elements along the sides to make it completely your own and break the template. When I'm happy with my piece and I'm ready to either share it to Instagram or to share it to my computer so I can print it off or print it off straight from my iPad, I just wanna make sure that that template layer is turned off with a little check mark so that it doesn't export with all those template lines still attached to it. And then to export, I can come up here to the little gear hit share, and it gives me all sorts of options to share um, to share my image. I can also look at the video, do a time-lapse replay. That will show me all of the cool things that I did to create this piece, which can be really fun to share on Instagram or just to watch yourself. Sometimes I just watch them just for fun. I wanted to show you a quick example with one that is in a quadrant a four quadrant repeat rather than a just vertical repeat. So I'm gonna do the same thing as before, add a new layer, put 
the um, template layer above, turn down that opacity, and then I can start drawing on my new layer. So as I get going, let's say I want to start off with this um, big circle flower in the middle. If I have my drawing assist turned on, so my symmetry turned on, it's going to give me symmetry on all corners of that flower. So if it's a flower like that, that works out. I actually really like that, makes it nice and symmetrical, and I can just fill it in. But if I wanted to do a flower that maybe looked more like that, so it had you know more of a shape to it that wasn't symmetrical, top, bottom, side, side, that is not going to work as I try and draw it with the uh, symmetry on. It's gonna give me a weird shape. So for something like that, I may want to turn that drawing assist off, draw in my flower, get it how I want it to look, and then turn that drawing assist back on to start drawing some of these other flowers that are on the template. So I could do that with this middle flower. I could do that with this one right here, turn it off and then um, draw it freehand. Or if I'm like, well, I'm not very good at making these two sides look symmetrical. As you can see, like this side kind of dips a little lower, this one's a little higher. And I really want it to be symmetrical, just not all the way around. So how I can do that is go into Canvas, Edit Drawing Guide, and hit Vertical. So before it was on this quadrant, now I'm gonna hit Vertical. Hit Done. Go to that pink color again. Now when I go to draw that shape, it is giving it to me symmetrically. And I can color it in. Life is good. But when I go to color in this flower, it's not also getting these bottom ones. That means I need to go back to Edit Drawing Guide, turn back on the quadrant, hit Done. Now I can draw on all four sides again. So there is some finagling you have to do if you're wanting to kind of break the pattern and break the template, but that is an option for when you just can't quite get what you want with the symmetry function as it's set up in the template when you download it. I hope that that was a good overview on how easy and wonderful it is to use these templates and just how a few little tricks that you may not know about Procreate can help you really create some beautiful artwork in a much shorter time, not having to think about the composition. Um, most of all, I hope that you can use these to enhance your own style and um, just have it speed up your um, workflow as you are working within your own style with your own little quirks and things that make you, you. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you have watched this tutorial and you don't yet own the Folksy Florals templates, head over to onthemarkdesigns.net to pick those up. I promise that they are worth the money and that they're going to streamline your process. And hopefully you can tell from this video that they're really easy to use and you're just gonna have a lot of fun with them. Thank you.